it's very important to have second line treatments available. Um, if someone is unable to tolerate the first line treatment, we do want to be able to provide them with something. The goal here is to normalize alkaline phosphatase. That's been a big discussion in the community. And so we want to be able to provide some way to do that. And so having a second line treatment that could be used when someone is intolerant of ursodial is quite important to be able to offer to patients. Yeah, I mean, the impact is still evolving, but it has been first off exciting to have more options for our patients. Um, it is now opening up the doors for patients who need a second line treatment, who might be intolerant of ursodial, who might be intolerant of ocalava too. So now we have more things to offer. So I think that it will affect the future of PBC medications where the bar might be raised a little bit in how many people we aim to have not only reduction of alkaline phosphatase, but normalization as well as how many patients actually respond to the medications. The trials for all of the new medications had even more success rates. So our bar is probably going to keep getting raised, but it is in all exciting to be able to offer them a lot of different treatments and be able to affect more people and prevent more problems from PBC in the future. As I was starting to hit towards, we're starting to aim more for the normalization of alkaline phosphatase, not just being able to get it below that 1.67 times the upper limit of normal. We're aiming to make somebody have a completely normal lab test. The idea is that the lower and the more normal that number is, the less activity of PVC that there is also. And therefore, the less risk this person has of hepatic fibrosis, cirrhosis, and liver decompensation. So it is hopefully changing the outlook for all of us. The treatment timelines have shifted a bit because the newer medications were showing improvements in their trials very early on. And so we might start checking earlier. And the patients may actually have their feedback earlier too. That's in encouraging to see your labs improve within a month or two. And even for those where that doesn't happen, uh, six months has become one of the more normal times to check and make treatment decisions. So I think we're starting to shift everything a little sooner and earlier. And that goes along with this, this goal of normalizing ALK-FOS. If we know what we're doing sooner, then we don't have any time lapse where we could be potentially causing damage potentially missing an opportunity to change or address something that could have been done sooner. Yeah, I mean, I think every patient that comes to us now that we're seeing with PBC, we open up with that there are new medications on the market and here's what we know about them. And here is what their effects have been. And here is all of the things that now are available to you. And if we feel that they need a second line treatment or they weren't tolerant of any treatment, then we can start to discuss what one they would like in some ways, because some of the effects from the newer medications have, um, one of them is a little bit better on puritis. One of them might've been a little bit better with other concomitant medications. So we can start navigating it with them. Uh, and it also allows us to start discussing the goal of normalizing ALK-FOS. A lot of these trials did not include people whose ALK-FOS was a little less than the upper limit of 1.67 times the upper limit of normal, but above the normal range. And so there are more trials coming out for these medications to test them in that, that population. So we might be able to hit a wider range of patients this way and discuss that with them, as well as hit our goals. And we can, you know, stop PBC in its tracks, which is, I believe, the main thing of this disease that we're trying to aim for. I do think one thing that I keep learning myself throughout discussing all of the medications and treating my patients and being a part of the trials is that we might need to be more conscious of how we are talking about PBC uh, symptoms 
the fatigue and itch, I find myself not asking it well enough or not asking at all, especially about itch. It might not be something that the patient realizes is connected. It realizes that it is important to tell us. And so I think being more consistent and conscious of this and making our patients aware that this is potential symptom, side effect, um, anything in that category, and just you know, making sure we're providing our most comprehensive kind of care for these patients.